Well, welcome back to the uh, monthly precious metals projections. This is a free service from Sprott Money, Sprott Money News. I'm your host, Craig Hemke, and joining us as usual is Chris Vermeulen of the Technical Traders. Chris, good to see you again. Yeah, thanks for having me, Craig. It's always fun to get your insights. Uh, here, as we begin September, we are certainly get into a volatile period in the precious metals. That, of course, can always lead to some dips that maybe you can buy and add some physical. So if you want to add some physical metal, of course, always remember that Sprott Money is the sponsor of these broadcasts. You go to SprottMoney.com, great deals on physical precious metal, but also storing that precious metal if you, if you need to. Again, please remember Sprott Money, give us a like, maybe a subscribe on whichever channel you're listening to and help us spread the word. Chris, It as we record this, it's September the 7th. Uh, back on the 3rd of September on Friday, man, we were looking good. Lousy jobs report, uh, precious metals rallied higher, and as did uh, the mining shares. And now here on the 7th, the dollar index is now completely reversed and actually higher versus Friday. Mm -hmm. Interest rates have continued to rise and the precious metals have been completely shoved backward. Let's just kind of start with a kind of a 37,000 foot view of where we are with gold. Sure. Uh, because again, we've got a pretty crummy looking daily chart, another big red candle. Um, what levels are you watching? And is all of this, uh, you know, to be expected almost? Yeah, well, let's let's take a look at the chart. If we want if we want the high level view, let's really step back and, and just take a look at the, the monthly chart. So we all know kind of the pattern that we're we're playing in here. Now, obviously, uh, the run we've seen since 2019 has been a beautiful rally. We're in this bull flag phase. And the big question where we are right now is, is it a bull flag like this, a bull flag like this, or is it a bull flag like this? Either way, uh, we're not, we're not going to know till it unfolds, but right now we've got this beautiful rally up. We've got this beautiful consolidation. Uh, we had this huge wick low, which we'll see on the daily chart in a minute, very major support level there. And really we, what we're waiting for is for this gold market to eventually start to break some previous highs. Uh, on the chart, and then that could, you know, tip the scales to another very big rally, which is roughly twenty six hundred dollars on gold. So the the thirty eight thousand foot view here is a major bull flag pointing to a very big run. I'm um, looking forward probably over the next one to three years. You never know how long this stuff is going to take to play out. But let's jump down to the daily chart and take a look. Friday was a really positive day on uh, for gold and in miners and silver. And really, we saw this huge pop, which was a pretty nice move. You see this nice rally up, it trades sideways in a tight little bull flag. We have second half of that move measured out. But uh, as you and I talked about just before uh, we started recording here, it's a pretty major resistance level on this chart. And I was telling subscribers on Friday when that came out in pre-market, I said, listen, guys, as, as exciting as this is, this is a move based on news. And it's running it up into a major resistance that each time it's got here, we've seen a big reversal in the market to the downside. And so really pretty clear that level on this chart, even over here, it consolidated through here. So I'm not surprised to see a news base pop into resistance get sold off today. And um, maybe we're going to actually go a little bit lower. And, and last time you and I talked, we were referring to this, this spike low that we had just seen on the charts. And we said it, over the next month or so, we could start to see gold come back down and test this level, much like it did over here when it flushed out, it bounced for a while, came back to retest that. We could very easily see gold work itself back down. Maybe it's not going to go all the way down to 1680. Maybe it's going to come down to the 1700 mark or somewhere down over here. But uh, I, definitely the charts have reversed and we're still kind of in this downtrend across the board for precious metals that we could see this work itself lower over the next little bit. So that's kind of my view on, on gold here. Chris, I might take this opportunity to answer one of the questions that came in this week, because I get a lot of my TF Metals report site, and that is what is the value of technical analysis if the markets are manipulated? Well, we'll let the, the listener or the, whoever sent in that message uh, answer to themselves whether the markets are manipulated or not. I've, that's one of the things I've based my work on a TF Metals report. We call it manipulation analysis. I'll, I'll let you answer this in a second, but you just showed how gold went up to uh, 1836. That's a key level for making now uh, kind of a higher high. And that's precisely 
where price stopped on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the 50-day moving average in December gold on Friday was 2494. That's precisely where the silver rally stopped on Friday. So if you think the markets are manip- in manipulated, you ask yourself, well, by whom? Uh, if you think there's selling that comes in at certain points, you ask yourself, by whom? And then maybe technical analysis can actually be helpful if you can anticipate where those sellers uh, might try to cap price. Anyway, that's my long answer. Mm. <laughs> what the, what, what's your answer? I'll just let you give your answer. Yeah, I, I think almost everything in this world is manipulated. It could be yeah. from ice skating judges to, you know, uh, UFC fighting where, you, you know, we watch these games where clearly one guy won, but he was the underdog. Uh, yeah. He looked like he had the upper advantage, but the guy with the big brand name, because he was so close, gets the win. I mean, everything's manipulated. We all know, I think the financial markets are manipulated even more just because it has to do with money. If people can can make more money by lying and cheating and trying to, trying to play games in the markets, I mean, it's going to happen, but it's always been there. We're not really, technical analysis doesn't work, uh, um, you know, doesn't fail just because there's manipulation. I, I think manipulation is is really what creates technical analysis probably to be as good as it is because it's it's playing off emotions, extreme emotions of traders and investors, and it's taking advantage of them and it's pushing prices to the extreme, whether it's a, a news-based pop like on Friday, right up into resistance, and then it reverses and gets crushed today. That that's to me is kind of almost like manipulation, um, but it creates these opportunities. It creates these standout highs, these standout lows, these reversal right. points. So I, I mean, there, there's no way to really uh, gauge manipulation when it's going to happen, but the charts over the long run, sometimes, you know, you might get manipulated out of a trade, but I think uh, the markets in general are, are manipulating everyone, even a technical yeah. analyst they're manipulating. You just have yeah. to follow the price and, and stick with, you know, proven kind of strategies and analysis to, to get a feel of what is the underlying trend. You want to always be in line with that, right? So yeah. if, if it's down for precious metals right now, you don't really want to be fighting it just yet. When it does turn around, it's going to be exciting. But until then, you're, you're fighting an uphill battle. So, And, you know, sometimes it can help in that. And what I mean by that is you got that smash you just mentioned uh, back on Sunday night, August the 8th. And it bounced and concluded right at that 1680 level, which is exactly that double bottom from back in March. Yeah. Well, now we know given because of that smash, which really didn't affect anything, as long as you weren't selling your physical metal that yep. Sunday night. Uh, now we know how important 1680 is, right? So that can give us a, a signpost going forward if that does, you know, fails to hold, if we go back down there or whatever. Now we also know how important something like 1836-37 is as well. Yep, big time. So it gives us at least some signposts that, you know, that are pretty clear now that we can watch. Yeah. So, Chris, let's move on. I, I mentioned silver. Um, you know, a lot of folks were waiting for silver. You know, that we've been kind of flagging on that monthly chart now for better part of a year. I think I mentioned this to you before. Let me start you with this, then you can get into the daily. You know, silver, as you can see on Chris's chart, spent the better part of at least six years between 14 and 18. You go back even further, maybe call it seven years between 14 and 20. Yep. And then you get this pop over a period of about three weeks last year that now has established this new range between 22 and 28. Um, how, I guess, with hindsight, how unsurprising is that given the duration of the range uh, that preceded the pop? Yeah, I mean, you, you look at this range from the high down to this low. I mean, silver's obviously been very range bound, obviously the odd little peak through there, but it's trading in this nice base. If we were to, it'd be mm-hmm. interesting to see if this kind of range is roughly the same. Usually whatever the pattern is, the breakout, usually the next one is roughly the same. So you can see from the high to the low, the range was very similar in, in the pre kind of pop to a bull market rally. So, I mean, everything here to me is is fairly weighted. I mean, in terms of a bull flag pattern, we definitely should see silver start to move up sooner than later. It's starting to get a little long. But overall, I mean, this is a very strong pattern. Um, I would argue it's stronger than gold simply because it's it hasn't been flagging down. It's actually been yeah. kind of trading in a sideways base. And um, I think eventually when it breaks, it's going to have a huge move, probably much more than a measured move, just because it has so much 
um, speculative traders in there. It's a fast mover. It, it always seems to overshoot and run its targets. So I really like silver a lot. It's it's holding up very well, a lot better than gold. And when it does pop and run, it's going to have a, a pretty big move. But I mean, we just have to wait for that. We've seen a couple of fake outs and um, really it's, it's just range bound, the same as gold yeah. in, in that kind of uh, regard. 22 looked like a rather important support level. I mean, that was the double bottom uh, from September and November of last year. Uh, and then we kind of got near there, not right. all the way down there back on August the 8th. Does that look like a pretty important level? Yeah, these, these are, I think are really, re this is a pretty clean line on the chart. Of if mm -hmm. that level's broken, things could get pretty ugly. Like silver's, you know, very clearly in a downtrend over the last several months here stuck under the 50 day moving average each time we've hit that 50 day like you can friday see it, it sold down sold off sold off here was another big pop and it, it's selling off again uh, hope, hopefully we see a bottom get put in the metals market but again i think we could see them potentially drift down maybe come back down to this 23 area um, which would be perfectly fine eventually this is going to build a base right. we're going to see gold and silver and miners start to move higher but right now they're they're kind of in this early stage of trying to create a bottom. Are they going to come back down for a test or another test? We're not sure yet, but I think I think the low has been put in for them. And now it's just a matter of time of letting them really just play out. What are they going to do before they start yeah. to, to hook to the upside and break out? Well, it'll be interesting to see where this month plays out. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Friday was all about a lousy jobs report and made people think that uh, any taper plan from the Fed is off the table. Uh, just a reminder that next FOMC meeting begins two weeks from today as we record this <laughs> on uh, whatever that is, the 22nd. Uh, Today's the 8th, I think, 7th. I can't keep yeah. track. 7th, I guess, Seventh, 21st. Yeah. Um, so anyway, two weeks, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, 21st and 22nd will be the next FOMC. And uh, we'll see what kind of action we get out of the metals between now and then. Uh, let's look uh, quickly at the shares. Chris, sure. Uh, they're tracking again a lot like silver. Uh, down, can't seem to get out of their own way. Uh, pinned below the 50-day moving average, that 31 to 31.25 level sure seems to be pretty important on the GDX. Uh, what are your thoughts on the shares in general? Sure. Yeah, I, I feel as though um, again the precious metals market's trying to carve out a bottom. I feel like this type of low is very similar to this. Yeah, um, this rebound up is kind of this rebound up, and I, I think we're going to see it try the market try and trade sideways here. I, I think most of the downside for gold uh, is over. I, I think it's just a matter of putting in some time, and then it's going to start to kick into an uptrend uh, and move forward. And what's interesting is you and I are talking today, but you know we see um, bonds are down sharply. We're seeing precious metals and miners down. So there's definitely money moving away from the defensive plays. And it'll be interesting to see if money starts piling into the stock market or not um, going forward. And, and maybe these are going to be a little bit more dormant for a bit before they actually rally. But I mean, obviously, the gold miners have, have hit a significant support level, just like gold and silver. Uh, yeah. So we just need to see it, see all of them form a base over the next couple of weeks, potentially over the next month or two. And then when they start to break from that pattern, whether they break down or break to the upside, then we're going to get a gauge of you know how it needs to be attacked and traded. But right now, it's they're in a downtrend near support, and uh, we just need to see if they're going to start to reverse and go higher, or if this downtrend continues to kind of bleed out and go lower or not. You know, the GDX, I've, it has looked to me like, again, you got those moving averages that needs to eclipse. Yeah. Man, anything above 35 would certainly seem to get a lot of people's attention, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think that would that would be a, a pretty strong move when when you look at the charts. Thirty five would 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 obviously it would break uh, this high or this internal high and, and all these highs over here. Yeah. And that would definitely be a nice impulse wave, and then potentially it flags down for a bit, and then you get that second measured move up to the forty. You break forty. I mean, it's off to the races after that. Right. Um, right. So th th there's a lot of work to be done, but I mean, it's going to have to do one of these where it's going to rally up, pull back. And then it's going to have like its first real big impulse wave where it has to break either kind of like an internal standout high and an external. Once it's broke, broken two highs, it doesn't matter if it's two here or two back here. Once it's broken two of those, I consider that like an impulse move to the upside. And that didn't happen on GDX. Like We broke here. Um, really, 
once once we start to break above, we broke kind of these two highs were the same, but you broke this one and you could argue both of these are kind of the same. Once we had this move up and broke through two different highs, the first pause or pullback can be bought. And then you can get, usually get the second half of that move. So uh, we really do need to see like gold miners have a, a big push to the upside. They need to break this high. Uh, along the way up, we might have like an internal high where it comes yeah. down and then rallies. And that'll be one high, two highs that it's broken. And once you've broken two previous highs, I consider that the momentum has shifted. It's just busting through resistance levels. You're good to go. But if you've only broken one resistance area, uh, it might stall out on the second one. The momentum probably hasn't fully shifted yet. Yep. Yep. And again, you know, like we always say, Chris, you know, it's not no trend goes to zero on the downside. Nothing goes to infinity on the upside. Mm -hmm. um, they could continue a lot longer than you'd like and certainly end up pulling your hair out. But yeah. um, eventually these trends will change. Um, let's conclude with something we don't usually discuss, but I thought it might be of interest to several people that watch. Um, the uranium market has been just going like crazy lately. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was dead money for about 10 years after Fukushima. It's, it's a hard, you, you certainly can't trade it. It's a hard thing to even find prices on because yeah. it's kind of these negotiated prices at spot. Um, yeah. However, you can see price changes reflected in uh, uranium mining stocks and things like that. Sprott Inc. has made a really big move in the uranium market. That's probably part of what's been driving it as of late. Uh, buying a uranium trust and taking some uh, some dollars and actually putting into physical uranium because they're such big believers. And again, that's Sprott Inc. that is doing that. Um, but it's led now, I've just seen even just the last few days, all kinds of people uh, who probably can't even spell uranium um, talking about how excited they are. Yeah. I would, you know, this would be fun to talk about, Chris, but I suspect it probably comes with a little bit of a warning as well. Um, let's finish with uranium. What do you sure. think? Well, as you know, commodities, some commodities can go dormant for a decade, right? I mean, precious metals market was dormant for almost right. that. Uh, and and this, this, is, this could be one of those really exciting cases where it does go out of favor. Nobody cares about it. Nobody thinks about it. Yeah. Uh, it finally just completely falls off the radar. And then out of nowhere, it starts to come back to life. If we were to yeah. zoom in a little bit, you can kind of see where there's this kind of blue line across this chart. We had a, a real standout high over here. Um, you could argue we had another standout high over here. Plus, it kind of acted as a bit of a support level. And you can see how price is now finally, years later, coming back to life. It's pushed up through those levels. It's had a pullback. And now it's, you know, it's really starting to take off. From this monthly chart perspective, uh, really, it could just be starting some crazy new super cycle to the upside. So, I mean, there's who knows where the upside potential is. But when you look at it, you know, from a more granular level, we drop down to the daily chart, it could be a little bit overstretched. And the way I like to look at a price action like this, this is kind of a signature pattern of like a, a bubble. Everyone's chasing it at the same time media is getting in. And the way I see that on the chart is when price starts to rally and then you get a gap and a rally, another gap, rally, and the gaps get bigger, the rallies get bigger, and volume starts to skyrocket because now it's like headline media news. Everyone's talking about it, just like you said. Right. This is kind of the crowded trade move right here. And, and who knows, maybe it's going to blow off real quick up to 27 or higher. Like you, you never know where a top is in a, in a parabolic kind of bubble phase. But all the signatures are here now that it could rally. And then when it reverses, it's going to give back most of that and fizzle right. out. Um, not saying this super cycle rally is over. I'm just saying this short term move has got everyone chasing it. They're overdriving the price up. And then any pause or pullback to me could be a very good opportunity. Obviously, this down here would have been amazing based on uh, on the big pattern we looked at. Let me just um, rescale this huge run. It pulls back and then it starts to break out, breaks a high, breaks a high. Yep. And so that's where it, that's where right where it got its key momentum. And now it's just like surging and breaking to all time highs. I mean, it's just starting what looks to be a multi year potential uh, super cycle in this little pocket of stock. So um, I think you might be able to get it at a better price and right. maybe not roll a roller coaster. It might come down and fade uh, for uh, for a week or two or maybe just a few days. But I think it's like nosebleed section short term just because the volume, typically when something goes straight up on massive volume, it's going to come straight back down. 
and then take a little bit to digest. So that's yeah. from the granular level. I'd be very cautious here over the next few days. Yeah, it tends to exhaust itself after a little, you yep. know, in, in the short yep. term. So, but, it, you know, if anything, the old stockbroker in me kind of looks at that and goes, okay, if I believe the longer term, you know, the yep. green energy idea, uh, you know, getting uranium back in favor and that long-term monthly chart of yours certainly looks like it. You know, what you do, you, you, you average, you know, you don't on a Tuesday morning because you saw something on Twitter or an article someplace, just go plunging in Yeah, <laughs> look for dips. You yeah. know, and you look for ways to average and maybe that's what that short term picture is all about, too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this this looks like a pretty a pretty major pattern starting to break out. Yeah. Right? So it, it, sure I think it, it's definitely a speculative play. But the thing is, it's been out of favor since what, 20? Well, really, it's been out of favor 11. since 2011, at least yeah. just this ETF. Uh, and, and no one ever really talks about it. So if it starts to come back to life even more, it's going to get more attention and it just could be. It could be one of the hottest pockets, really. They're so yeah. thinly traded; they can run and move so fast, uh, and and then suddenly it's going to kind of be like the the marijuana stocks. I think, yeah, everyone I think wanted to get into them because who who doesn't want to you know make money selling drugs? It's like seems like it was easy money. Everybody's like, I want to get into the whole drug side, uh, which kind of didn't work out for a lot of people. But I think the same thing's going to happen with uranium potentially. That people would be like, whoa, uranium, like. We haven't heard of that forever, right? And they're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to buy some of those. It sounds cool. It, it, it's just one of those things that sounds so out left field. It sounds cool, interesting. It's got potential for hundreds, if not, you know, thousand plus percent return on some of these stocks. I mean, it's naturally going to gravitate and, and, and people are going to chase it higher. So, yeah, it looks well, What's that symbol we're looking at there, Chris? U, U-R-A. You're right. Yeah. Awesome. You know, and, and I just relate this back to precious metals because I'm sure everybody looks at that chart and they see silver in that chart too, right? Yeah. Crashing down, going sideways and dormant forever and just getting rolling, which is what it just started doing yeah. uh, last year, you know, and you begin to project forward. And again, money gets hot and uh, people start jumping on the momentum train, but you got to get some breakouts first. And uh, we've yeah. yet to break out of that consolidation yet, but you can sure see similarities and, uh, how quickly silver can move as well once it gets going. Yeah, for sure. We're 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 in a, a commodity bull market. I mean, they're so uh, they've been so undervalued compared to real estate and stocks. Yeah, uh, it's their it's their time to shine, and they are. They're they've got the patterns. It's just a matter of time. These are big multi year patterns, so uh, it's pretty exciting. If you've got precious metals, especially physicals, I mean, that to me is like kind of the ultimate safe haven play. Who knows what the currencies are going to do? Who knows how big. Metals are going to pop, but uh, anything related to commodities, commodity stocks, the uranium, gold miners, silver metals, miners, um, there's a lot of potential uh, once it yep. does uh, turn this corner. Yep. And again, if you want some physical metal, context brought money. They are the ones that bring you all of this great information, whether it's the ASCII experts, the, the weekly wrap ups, the monthly wrap ups, or these technical analysis videos with the great Chris Vermeulen. Um, Thanks, Sprott Money, by giving them either a subscribe or a like on whichever channel that you're watching. That helps to spread the word. But also, I mean, stop by Sprott Money. Anytime you're in the market, compare prices. Look, if you're looking for a place to store metal as well, uh, international storage available too. So again, SprottMoney.com or 888-861-0775. Chris, it's going to be a crazy month with this FOMC meeting that's yep. pending and everybody back to work. And we start turning the corner toward the fourth quarter. Uh, I look forward to visiting with you again next month. I'll be curious to see how the charts look then. Yeah, sounds great, Craig. Looking forward to it. Thanks for everything, Chris. And from all of us, it's Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again in October.